Fancy. Take a seat, my friend. Let's see if you're in shot. You're about seven foot tall, so all we've got right now is your head. <laughs> my name's Tom Loveridge. Uh, my Instagram's at lovo92, and I'm here today for the Maguire's treatment. I am who I'm meant to be. I am who I'm meant to be. Over and out, over and out again. My future needed clarity. So I could see how you react. Nice and casual. So, oh wait, I've got to tell Nathan to turn the radio off. Do I need to turn the radio down? No. Are you still filming? No. Oh yeah, I'm about to start filming. No. Mr. Dale? Yes. What is today? So today is another day in the bay. So we have Tom in with his awesome bag to mark for golf. And we're going to be running through some, he wanted to learn how to detail it for a show and event. So we're going to be running through that with him today. And as it comes in straight away, look. So yes, today is the first day in the bay, a new series that we're starting on the Maguire's YouTube channel. So if you're not already part of Maguire's UK, then subscribe down below, hit the little button, and uh, yeah, make sure you stay tuned for all the exciting content that we have coming. So, a lot of people like pat and drag, yeah. or just pat and lift, or fold and wipe. It doesn't matter. Do not. It really doesn't. So like when you've got a super fluffy towel like this, what I personally like to do is fold it like this. Yeah. This way it turns one towel into eight. Yeah. So I just kind of, with hardly any pressure, just glide up the paint like that, and that's how they're done. I don't need to overwork it. So, so far, Mr. Dale, what products have you used? So, to wash the car, we've used our Ultimate Wash and Wipe Shampoo, yep. which is a fully pH neutral shampoo, really safe, really super glossy as well. To dry the car, we have the Supreme Shine Microfiber Towel, yep. um, it's a super plush towel to efficiently dry the car. We have used on the bottom sills our heavy duty cleaner, which is a new multi-purpose cleaner. Okay. It's fantastic for any areas that get a bit grimy, a bit dirty. Um, we've used our ultimate all wheel cleaner on the wheels. Another pH balanced product, so it's safe on all coated wheels, whether or not they're powder coated, two pack lacquered, or just plain polished. Perfectly safe to use. And um, we used the bug and tar foam, which you pretty surprised like this. Uh, another new product, so it's our new bug and tar foam. So it clings to the paint. So you make sure the paint works dry, so you don't wet the car first. Apply the foam, let it dwell for a few minutes, gel wash it off, job's good. So if you want to start feeling areas, so yeah. now we've washed it, we're going to start evaluating the surface. So we want to see if it needs clay barring. So if you want to run around and kind of, if there is areas, you're going to hear it or kind of feel it. Roughly, it's actually yeah. pretty smooth because you look after it pretty well. So there's chances are there's going to be very few areas that need clay. Feel your car, <laughs> feel it. Oh, that's you nice. can hear it. Well, it's like um, you use it as a percussion instrument. It's that pretty. Snare drum. <laughs> Snare drum. We could, we could be in a jazz band. You used to be a jazz drummer. Did Fact. You? Yeah. What haven't you done, Dale? So warming up the clay. So clay won't change how the paintwork looks, but it changes how the paintwork feels. So it removes any contaminants that are sitting on top of the paintwork. Okay. So we need to do this before we touch it with any compounds, polishes and waxes, because we want this to be as smooth as possible. And if we don't clay, you run the risk of grinding that grime into the paintwork and creating more swirls and scratches, which don't look very good. We don't want this. No. All we need to do is get it nice and wet, like that. And then in, now it's nice and flat and sticky, yeah. just do nice, clean, straight lines. Because if you do circles, it's kind of a bit too random. Yeah. So you want to keep it nice straight lines. And we're going to be kind of doing this through every process, whether it's wiping off detailer, wiping off wax. We'll kind of do this up and down, left and right, especially when using the machine. So it's good to kind of get a process yeah. in. So you can hear it. What's that doing? Yeah, so it's picking up anything that's sitting on the paint, look. Yeah. 
So even though the car's in really good condition, you keep it very clean, there's always bits in the lacquer that you probably can't see. Yeah. Out there, mate. Yeah. People sometimes ask, can I use just water on its own? But the problem is, water doesn't have the lubricity detail right. it does. So you need that really slippy surface. You can hear it. Right. Lubricity, 10 points if you can spell that. Me? Yeah. No chance. Okay, mate. Dyslexic? Very. Same. It was about four years ago. I bought it as a non-runner and just sort of got the bug and just gone from that. It's on Airlift V2. Um, it's got water-cooled industry three-piece split wheels. Uh, it's got a custom interior wing back seat from the red leather. We've got a lorry outside. Hang on. Uh, when I get into it, the gear gated door car's trimmed up. It's got a custom boot build uh, with the tank wrapped in red leather. Um, we've got some custom R32 headlights with the black backs. And we've got a bit of camber on there and perfect fitment. Oh, See how you got yeah. the cobwebs? Like you yeah. say, you look after it in a good way. Your washing technique's proper. Um, it's just over time they do happen. And like I say, it's been to a body shop. It's probably like been rotary polished and stuff yeah. like that, but, which is fine. Um, we're just going to use light products now just to refine that. It's already good paint. Yeah. We just want to make sure it's proper clear. Step one will be our automatic compound. Traditional compounds can feel quite hard and chalky in, in your hands, whereas this one is super slick. Yeah. So use micro abrasives. So what we're going to do, instead of attacking the paint like hard and fast, it's gently just going to kind of exfoliate it. Right. And it's just going to bring that clarity back that you want. Okay. So that'll be our step one. So that's the reviving step. The only damage you'll ever do with this machine is dropping it on the paint. Yeah. Obviously there's a few golden rules. So always keep the cable over your shoulder. That way you're not gonna be rubbing it on the paintwork. Yep. And always start and stop the machine on the panel. Because you've already done a great job of cleaning it. We don't want to just chuck product everywhere. Yeah? Yeah. You feel it's pretty pretty weighty. Yeah. So this means that you don't need to apply any additional pressure. Just yep. use the weight of the machine itself. But what we're gonna start with is our kind of medium ground polishing pad. Yeah. So it's course. still quite firm to remove the scratch and swirls, but it's soft enough to revive to refine the paint. Yeah. So I'm going to set it to the slowest speed on the machine and just spread it. What I do is two passes, left and right, yeah. up and down, essentially creating a hashtag. Yeah. yeah. The reason I do this is I've got a clear view of where I've been, it just keeps it nice and even and regimented. Backhand is your balance, that's yeah. making sure that pad is always flat. Right, okay. So if you've ever seen a car after a machine car, it's got zigzag lines all over yeah, it, yeah. that's because someone's had it on an edge. Right. So if you keep it on a flat, flat surface, you'll never get lines. Okay. This hand is my guide. This is just telling the machine where to go. So I don't add any additional pressure, just enough to keep it nice and flat. Yeah. Now you can hold it there, you can hold it there, you can hold it there. It's however you feel comfortable. Okay. So I'm just going to get it started. And the trick is to go as slow as possible. Right. If I do that, it's not giving it time to work. I am who I'm meant to be. I am who I'm meant to be. Over and now, over and now. My future needed clarity. So I could see how you react. First of all, what do you do for a living? What what's the? I'm jobless. No. <laughs> um, well, I'm in sales. Um, so pre my previous job was with the MOD in sales, and then I went into the oil industry with sales, and now I'm looking at pursuing that career with another company. Have you always had that passion for cars? I've not always had it. No. Um, if I'm honest with you, when I first started taking my driving lessons, I hated driving. Oh uh, really? Yeah, never got into it. And. Since then, I bought a Mark IV Golf was from the first car, yeah. and decided to do what every lad does and drop it by about 40 mil and have a sketchy at all. Nice, cut the springs. Ah, yeah, pretty much, mate. Um, and then when that blew up, I decided to continue with the passion when I found this. 
and so yeah the, the jobs help on the financial side of things but it's not put two and two together in terms of I don't know furthering my excitement with the goal. Like that. Then slow speed again get it spread. Then you see on your machine we've got waxing and polishing. Yep. 3848 again slap bang in the middle of those two. Zero pressure on the pad. And because the machine's going slower, we yep. can go quicker. Right, okay. Yeah. So just a little bit faster. Let it spin. And what you're doing, you're speeding the paint, uh, speeding the paint with the polish, so it kind of embeds into the lap and gives it that real gloss. With the polish, we don't want to overwork the surface. So we're using less product, less speed and less effort. So we're still doing the two passes, but because the machine's going slower, that's why our, our movements were quicker. Yeah. Just because you just want to get it nice and fed into the paint and really enhance that gloss. So, like a compound, you don't want this to dry. So as soon as you've applied the, the polish, get our finishing towel, which is a much softer microfiber, and straight off like that. So a polish should never be allowed to dry. But the reason we polish before waxing, or wax after a polish, is because polish offers no protection. Right. So it enhances gloss, but offers no protection. So that's why we put on a wax afterwards. So if you run your backing thing on there, it should feel super slick now. Yeah. Yeah. So all it's doing is feeding into the paint and really magnifying that fleck that's underneath it. So for next year, I'm going to have all my interior ripped out. Um, it's got everything's going to be trimmed. Uh, the wheels, it's a bit of a toss for the moment, whether to keep them polished and just get them redone, or to go for a funky colour. Keep them polished, they look I reckon, rash. I reckon so, that's the general verdict. And do you see yourself selling the car anytime soon, or is, have you now formed this emotional <laughs> attachment? My missus, um, she's, <laughs> she's in love with the car. Um, if I hadn't have met her a couple of years ago, then I probably wouldn't have it today. Oh really? So, yeah, she loves it more so, than me. after we have now polished the car, mm -hmm. what's next? So, we've revived it, we've refined it, and now we want to protect it. So that's why we're going to use our ultimate paste wax. So it does come in liquid form as well, but we want to teach Tom about hand application, so I'm going to show him how to properly apply a paste wax. Cool, so we're going to be using the ultimate wax. Now, the reason we're using this on your paint is because it's metallic. Yep. So, you've got two types of waxes in the world. You've got canubas, yep. and then you've got synthetics. There's probably loads of other types, but if you want to break it down as simple as possible, you've got two. Now, Canuba is naturally toffee coloured. So if you had a solid colour, like the yellow or the red or a blue, something that wasn't metallic, you use that to give it a real depth and warm gloss. Right. But for metallics and dark colours, because synthetic's naturally quite clear, I like to use it on them because what it does, it magnifies the fleck and really makes that paint pop. Right, okay. Yeah. As we've been doing each time, we want to prime the pad. So this is how much wax you need. On the wax, half a turn. That's enough now to do the whole front end. So to make life easier for you, I'm gonna draw three stripes like that. And what we're gonna do is just one pass over it like that. And you should barely see it. And the reason we put the stripes on there is like we've been doing each time, we wanna prime it. Yeah. So everywhere gets an equal share of wax. Yeah. It's constantly topping up the pad, yeah? So nice 50-50 over that, hardly any pressure. Like I say, it doesn't matter if you go straight lines, doesn't matter if you go circles, as long as you're spreading it evenly on a nice, clean, prepped surface, you're not going to have issues. Break it down. Action. What do you want? I was just think, saying, how long does wax have to stay on there? So with it being a synthetic wax, it will stay softer. Um, traditional waxes can go quite firm in the heat, um, but this one, the best way of checking if it's ready to come off is just to swipe it like that. There's a bit of a streak there, which means it's still curing. So there isn't a set time of how long a wax is going to last on there, but in cool, dry conditions like this, it's going to stay nice and soft for a good, you know, there's no kind of length of time. There's no answer to that. How long is a piece of string? How long is a piece of string? Yeah, exactly. But in inside conditions like this, where it's nice and cool, this is going to stay like this for hours. So, you know, if you want to go and leave it for an hour to go and have some food or, or a drink or whatever, it's going to be fine. Obviously with everything, you have your good and your bad days with it. And 
there's certain times where you want to sell it for, I don't know, 500 quid and just get rid of it. Yeah, you were saying you've had some bad luck with it. Elaborate yeah. on some of those stories. Um, uh, the main one in particular was a fateful incident with a ratchet strap at the start of the year when I was going to Elskar at the races. A ratchet strap came off the back of the lorry and went underneath the car, which sounds fine, but it took out the airlift, um, which in turn dropped the car to the floor and completely ruined all my arches, uh, my tyres, everything. So. Damn. That was the changing point from where it went from wrap to paint. Right. So you want to swipe the, the panel now, yeah? Yep. So it's been it's been 15, 20 minutes since we started waxing it. And as you can see, that's a super nice clear stripe yep. on there, which means it's ready to come off. Now, what we've been doing every process is our up and down, left and right. Yep. So get the towel nice and thick and folded, and then just gently wipe down like that. Comes off. So that's how easy a wax should, yeah. should come off and then flip the towel to the dry side and just wipe any excess off. And doing this will stop any white marks, any lines. And yeah. that's it, that's that. Because we really want to back off from the paint. You know, that's why we're using the ultra soft yeah. towels, new towels, really little amount of wax. Because we've done the hard work and each time you just want to back off, that's why we're using less and less product and effort. Yeah. Like that, didn't you? <laughs> Spend too much time in this bay. You, you, too you much know that cloth like the back of your back of your hand, mate. Me and this towel go a long way. We, do you? We, we've, we've done some things. <laughs> so, like anything with our products, the less you use, the better. And again, I know it's like an old hymn sheet. We're going to do our left and down, left and down, left and right, up and down. So it's just light mist the product. So we're using our pure clarity glass cleaner. So this is just a really nice high flash point kind of glass cleaner. So once you've wiped it with the wet side, yeah. again, buff it left and right with the dry side and it will just give it a super streak free finish. Now, if you ever find that you are getting streaks no matter what you do, it might be too much product. Right. So what we're gonna do now is lightly mist the car with a detailer. And what this will do is sit on any wax that hasn't been taken off yet. Okay. Um, it's a great way to finish the car. It's a super light coating of detailer. We're gonna use our mirror bright one. So it's a really nice flash point on this so you won't get any streaks. And once you've missed it on the panel, again, as we've been doing each time, like one way, but the other way. It also smells incredible. Yeah. That's just going to remove any product that's left on the panel. Yeah. The one thing that sticks out the most is a little goes a long way. Um, I found out a lot of the time I've been using products that I've probably been using a bit too much of it and making life harder for myself. Um, but there's so many lessons you learn, honestly, I couldn't recommend it enough. Well, the car is looking absolutely sick and the work is about to start work again, so that's a good thing to cut Rock there. <laughs> How's your day been? It's been great, mate. Honestly, one of the best days I've had, mate. Um, car looks great. I say everyone's treating me so nice, and I've learned no end about the products as well. So. But it's like one of them things. It's I say you sometimes go through them slumps when you got your cars and stuff, and you get yourself into a bit of a rut, and I don't know, lose a bit of interest with it. And when you come to places like this, and they teach you how to use the products and sort of get the results that you've always wanted, it pays off. Perfect. The car looks sick. So go enjoy. Thank you ever so much. Oh, where is this? Oh, it's emotional. <laughs>